Somebody is trying to destroy Pat McAfee. According to Pat, anyway. He said a dude named Norby, the head of event and studio production at ESPN, is trying to sabotage his show. And if that wasn't true before, I bet it is now. Well, the regular season is behind us, but that won't stop us from making fun of the games anyway. However, before we do, if you're new to the channel, welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. Check out our playlists. You're watching an NFL roast. We also do fantasy football content in the offseason, NFL news, and a host of other silly skits and shit. Always football-based. Plus, all the custom graphics I make get posted on the Instagram, and we have a Discord server. Everything is in the video description. Go find it. Go click it. We're trying to grow this channel for reasons that I will someday understand. And now, the roast. Mason Rudolph, brought to you by Barefoot Wine. Barefoot Wine, have another one, you lush. Baltimore rested their starters. They sent Lamar Jackson's stunt double in. It was raining balls. Eight fumbles on the day. There was so much rain, the camera looked like one of those glamour photos your mom gets at the mall. They complimented Mason Rudolph for being on time, like he's a train, so punctual. Darth Vader was there. Deontay Johnson scored a touchdown, and thank God! It's about time those terrible towels saw a wash. Anyone bring any bubbles? Chest bump for the team lighthouse keeper. The team went to 10 and 7. Mike Tomlin's never seen a losing season, or resting heart rate below 100. Mason Rudolph looks like a cross between Gaston and Shrek. The broadcast used a double box during his interview, juxtaposing Rudolph with men headed to the shitter. Tomlin was eager to drop the deuce he's been holding for 30 years. I mean, that's why he walks that way, right? Is Stroud the past tense of stride? CJ Stride would be a cooler name. It sounds like a movie about a race car driver played by Burt Reynolds. That's a dated reference, but I'll save the young viewers a Google search. Burt Reynolds was Ryan's dad. Stroud's first pass of the game went for points. They should do that every time. Your mom was there. They showed the Washington coaching staff from 2013. Look at those babies. Their asses must have been so smooth. Was that the benchmark for Dan Snyder to hire them? This feels like a hundred grit. Hard pass. Stroud threw a touchdown to fullback Andrew Beck. Fullback? What the heck is that? Two halfbacks in a trench coat? He looks like a normal size to me. Does this mean halfbacks are little people? They're certainly paid like it. That he beats right in the gap. I'm not gonna lie, you are very close right now. Jonathan Taylor scored a touchdown, and they went for two. Why was it raining crow feathers? Was there some kind of crow-related street fight going on on the rafters? I'd rather watch two dozen birds in a battle royale over disputed nesting grounds. Mike Vrabel was already disgusted, and the game hadn't even started yet. The season was on the line for the Jags. It was playoffs or play with yourself next week. King Henry and Tajay Spears shredded the Jags' defense like old newspapers and lined the cages of their pet birds with them. Sorry, Foyer Aluakon, Mr. Peepers makes dookie on you now. Terry Bradshaw had trouble with Tajay Spears' name. Runs Tajay, uh, Tajay, Tajay. He called him Fantasia, like he wears clear heels and works the pole for a living. Conditioner Jesus threw two picks in this game. They went for a long sleep on fourth down, but they came up short. The Texans were nothing more than spoilers. Keep them away from your milk and your Netflix queue. Dan Campbell played his starters. He said, you're either all in or all out, which is how I feel about pants. The Vikings played a lot of quarterbacks this year, but why does Kirk Cousins look like a delightful scamp who stole all the cookies, but you just can't stay mad at him? Hamburgers. It's not as effective when you try to stump the yard by yourself. Goff stayed sharp and threw for over 300 yards. The Lions got a tune-up, and the Vikings finally get some me time. Football. Yeah. Yeah. Derek Carr was dealing. He threw four touchdowns. Desmond Ritter is as dependable as a Swiss watch. Tusty. I'm really going to miss that guy. Dennis Allen doesn't walk. He saunters like a southern Jezebel. This was only a game for two quarters, but it morphed into a gif of assault. 
After the game, Arthur Smith was pissed for Dennis Allen running up the score. What, you want me to stop the whooping? Get on your knees and kiss the ring, bitch. I was raised by wolves. If this was Bill Belichick's last game in New England, it ended with snotsicles frozen to his face. There were 16 punts in this game. Someone suggested that all stadiums should be domes and was mocked. Who's laughing now? Watching Bailey Zappi and Trevor Simeon in a snow-covered shit show, where they're more likely to find a Yeti than a touchdown? Hey, look, it's, uh... Tom Cruise, maybe? But it's football weather! Fuck off! I'd like to see you do your job in the snow. Where's Bob? His balls are frozen to the driveway. Accounting is peeing on a shovel to try and flip him like a pancake. Or do you like watching dumpster teams fart field goals into a white abyss? They said Bryce Young was starting to come into his own, which sounds like lawyer speak for incest. Young didn't even break 100 yards in this. Eddie Panero shanked a field goal. DJ Chark fumbled a ball to the end zone for a touchback. And Raheem Blackshear had a touchdown negated by an illegal formation. Oh, I see it now. It's a jellyfish. Instead, the Panthers settled for zero points. It was an uninspiring win for the Bucks. Todd Bull said, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, revealing he has some pretty fucked up hobbies. Panthers interim coach Chris Tabor said they shot themselves in the foot. And that can't be true, because if they tried, I'm pretty sure they'd miss. No Flacco today. He was resting comfortably under a prison robe on the sideline. This game was meaningless. Just a tune-up for Jeff Driscoll before he heads to the UFL. Kevin Stefanski didn't want to give anything away before the playoffs. Instead, he was reading breakfast items and pig Latin off an old Denny's menu. Joe Mixon had two touchdowns. Andrea Yosevash had two touchdowns. David Bell had two touchdowns. Who's directing this game? Noah? You know he's got a boner for twos. The Bears' offense sputtered like a broken sprinkler and never saw the end zone. Justin Fields only threw 16 passes. This was a Dontavian Wicks game. Two touchdowns. This Packers receiving room is like an old man's scalp. Thin at the top, but thick on the bottom. Tony Romo praised Brett Favre for how he's affected Jordan Love. Pretty sure Love was in diapers when Favre was playing, so the effect was probably minimal. Unless Favre was a part-time nanny or embezzled money from his daycare. He's a tough-minded sucker, Coach LaFleur said, sounding like he was in a movie edited for TV, adding, kiss my act, you filthy monkey feather. The Packers continue to own the Bears, but don't try that in real life. They are very dangerous animals, and your HOA will not approve just because a few kids' arms went missing. <laughs> Owner Josh Harris watched his team with a look that said, note to self, find receipt. The Commanders would have had better luck stopping the Cowboys if they had laid shoulder to shoulder in the parking lot in front of the Cowboys team bus. Dak had another four touchdowns. Two interceptions were thrown by Sam. How will they replace me next year? My guess, quickly and with ease at the number two pick in the draft. After the game, they flushed Ron Rivera down the toilet. Luckily, it's FedEx Field and the plumbing does not work. The Cowboys just won the NFC East. That division continues to be a Russian roulette, which is how I like to watch it. Optimistic about the one in six chance, I don't have to watch the Cowboys finish with a win. In lieu of not making the playoffs, both teams rested my expectations. This felt less like a game and more like an audition for next season. Will Antonio Pierce be voted off the island? All Jacoby Myers does is burn Broncos. He had another two scores and heated a home of four, a very inefficient fuel source. The Broncos put Javante Williams in the Wildcat, which doesn't bode well for Jarrett Stidham's chances as QB1 next year. It's like every franchise quarterback says, sure, I'd love to come off the field. But what are you gonna do? When Kevin James says jump, you have to say how high are you right now? Dear Santa, let Super Trooper Aiden O'Connell keep the job next year. He looks like a woodchuck with personality. I am not done with this man, unless he shaves. For a full 20 minutes, I thought I was having a stroke. Turns out, I was just watching the Eagles. This team's collapse is so epic, it ought to be scored by Hans Zimmer. Bobby Okereke was flagged for offsides just because he tried to make a home inside Jalen Hurts' mouth. Oh my god, what happened to his finger? It looked like a country road. Paint this picture, hang it in the Louvre. It says everything about the end of this Eagles season. Punter Braden Mann finally found a willing partner for his dirty ballroom dancing. Dip me, you love sponge! Marcus Mariota came in and immediately threw an interception. The Eagles are moonwalking into the playoffs on two broken ankles. 
Mark Sanchez, what is your favorite building material? Concrete, baby. We were treated to another classic Murray Scurry. On fourth down, the Cardinals brought their kicker out, but it was all a delicious subterfuge. Trey McBride leaked out the back like a hole in a colostomy bag and scored. You sneaky little shits. I love this time of year. Coaches are pulling triggers like a child at a gun range. Fourth and two, fifth and 12, fuck it. Spray and pray, baby. Throw more footballs on the field. We'll sort the bodies after. It's everyone's last day at work. Kiss Linda and HR. Leave a fish in the drop ceiling of your boss's office. Then it's off to TGI Fridays for drinks and apps. Both teams rested their starters. It was Carson Wentz versus Sam Darnold in a game that I can only assume was free to get into, pay to get out. How come nobody spikes the ball with two hands? Show some creativity. Puka Nakua set records for most yards and most catches by an NFL rookie. All it took was one more game than pretty much everyone before him. And I can't wait until they go to 20 games a season and all of Tom Brady's records dry up like a wet fart in the desert heat by some rookie with an at symbol for a first name. With the record setting done, this game was free to fuck all the way off. It meant nothing to anyone unless they needed a Sam Darnold fumble for a payday. cha -ching. It was Blaine Gabbert versus Easton Stick, and I have no idea how they sold advertising space during this game. Six field goals, 11 punts, this was an orgy of legs. The only touchdown in this wasn't even scored by an offense. Stick gave birth at the seven yard line, and Mike Edwards raised it until it was six. Patrick Mahomes was on hand, listening to his favorite sound, Clippers. Gabbert overthrew his receiver by one or 12 yards, and Richie James tried to drag the defender with him for a score. Somebody castrated Herbie's hair, the source of his power now scattered to a barber's floor. A dick move, considering how many Chargers fans with alopecia would have paid good money for that and a bottle of Elmer's. Chris Jones reached double-digit sacks for the season and reached his incentive bonus, $1.25 million for that sack. The most I've ever earned from mine was a buck fifty in a form of an iTunes gift card. The season is over. Chargers fans were finally free to wade into the Pacific and entice the Sharks. Josh Allen was given the ball away like a 16th century child bride. Christian Wilkins picked his pockets down to the lint. Allen finally got him on the board with a pass that was tipped, and Trent Sherfield caught it off the deflection. It's a good thing he didn't trim his toenails that month. This is why you don't draft short receivers. That, and they live in a tree and never share their cookies with you. It's rude. Tyreek Hill put the Dolphins back on top, and NBC cut away from his flip. Why do they always do this? Show the celebration. Why do you hate fun? Deontay Hardy broke a huge return for a touchdown. He said he couldn't tell you what happened because he blacked out. I know the feeling. Sometimes I black out after a night drinking apple teenies and snorting watermelon swizzle sticks, only to wake up wearing burnt underwear, surrounded by Legos in a prison of my own making. So you know, same. Josh Allen put him up by six with a Dawson Knox touchdown. Knox said it was all God, and if I knew God had skin in this game, I would have parlayed my kids' college fund faster than you could say. Better learn a trade, Timmy. And that's game. Say goodnight, Robbie Chosen, the black community's response to Yahoo Sirius. The Bills won the AFC East. Time to pretend our hands are CV radios. Big man, this is rubbered up. Smash the gate at 98. Way you gonna play no toe. And now it's time for the soft pretzel of the week. Yummy. I was going to give the pretzel to all the fired coaches. It's a joy to make fun of them, but I take no joy from people losing their jobs. However, after thinking about it, they deserve to be fired. They were all given ample time to produce and they weren't trending in the right direction. So no, no pretzel for you. Instead, I'm giving the pretzel to Baker Mayfield, who was left for dead by the Browns. Bounced by the Panthers and the Rams, his career was in the NFL toilet. And all he did this year was throw for over 4,000 yards, ninth most in the league, 28 touchdowns, seventh most in the league, and make the playoffs. Kudos, you helmet smashing weirdo. That's worth a soft pretzel. Before we go, I'm curious about you guys. In the comments, please tell me how you watch football. Personally, I use YouTube TV, which is pricey as fuck like 80 bucks a month, and once the NFL season is over, I cancel it immediately. I also have an HD antenna, but it's inconsistent because it's in my attic. I can't get on my roof. It's dicey. I also have NFL Plus, which I really like, but I'm not sure I would pay for it if I didn't have a YouTube channel about football. 
Let me know how you watch. I'm not doing a survey, I just find the landscape to be changing and I'd love to hear your experiences. Thanks for watching Shut Up Football. Like, subscribe, say hi to your mom for me, and we'll catch you next week. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy. I'm tired. It's been like 18 weeks. Kevin, how do you watch football? Yeah, I have binoculars. Yes, I have neighbors. Oh, I know where this is going. Football! Yeah!